when you're out looking for these buck moths, uh, you can drive these back roads like I'm doing right now. A lot of times you'll see them flying right over you, just like one just did a minute ago, or a few seconds ago. Uh, it's kind of hard to distinguish the moths from all these falling leaves, but you just have to look closely. Uh, mostly all I'm seeing now are males. Okay, I was coming out to this main road and uh, saw one flying here next to the woods. And just to show you, this is what they look like. That's a male. Male has a red tuft on the end of the abdomen there. And uh, the females, I, I think I just saw one female flying, but I can't be sure. And they also have the uh, larger antenna, the feathery like antenna, which is typical of most Saturnid moths. So, anyway, we'll see how many more we can get, and uh, hopefully, I can get one on camera that's flying close by. Okay, this is supposedly the host plant of the eastern buck moth. This is blackjack oak. Here it is in its fall splendor. You can see the long shape to the leaf with the three narrow lobes at the end. And when you look at the bark, it has a rather rough texture and somewhat dark coloration. That's typical of these trees here that grow in this sandy, rocky soil. Here's a close-up of a, a dried leaf. Here's a better example here. The three narrow lobes at the end and the long tapering shape to the leaf. But in this area, I believe this is the primary host plant. Blackjack oak. I was walking up the road here and came in the woods and I just saw another male buck moth flying and I actually ran it down and happened to capture it. This is another fine example of a male, Hemiluca maya. And here it's exhibiting a defensive posture, which is typical of the uh, subfamily Ceratocampinae, which includes the uh, royal walnut moth and the imperial moth. Uh, the Citheronia and Aicles genus. So uh, anyway, we'll get him in the jar and see if we can find some more. There's the eastern buck moth flying, right? There. Hopefully I got that on video. Let's see if I can catch that one there. There, got that one in the net. Well, I filmed it and captured it. How about that? And there's another one. See, they're following a scent plume here. Uh, my suspicion is it's coming from that direction. You don't see any, and all of a sudden you see three or four. And they all seem to be heading in the same direction, generally speaking. So, anyway. There's another one. Flying. Coming low to the ground. Right there. That one was easy to catch. So there's two in the net. There's another one right there. That one came easy. So that's three in the net within the last 30 seconds. Right here. This is a good place. They seem to like this spot more than most other places. You can pinch these guys lightly and then they'll recover like this male. You don't want to squash them, just barely pinch them and they'll go into that defensive posture. That male there, he'll see, he'll fly away. There's the first male fluttering right there. I think he caught a little bit of a whiff of that pheromone. And he's hovering around right there. He 
is low to the ground, coming back. There he is. Now let's see if he returns. Well, this female Himaluka has stopped calling. She's in the cage fluttering around now. I'm still seeing males coming from that direction though. Uh, a minute ago there were four of them came by at the same time. Okay, she finally settled down and it appears to me that she's calling again. There you can see the, uh, the scent gland. Oh no, she's ovipositing. Wow. I thought she was calling, but it looks like she looks like there's an egg right there. Yeah. Well there's a male that just came in and it's hovering around the cage. I've got a few live males that I kept in there. Here's another one just came in. That's a real fresh male right there. Hovering around the cage. This is called anemotaxis. That's what the males do to home in on the female. There that one goes. But uh, let's see what happens. There's a slight breeze now. It's about 65 degrees, and uh, rather mild conditions. This is what I was hoping to get on video. <laughs> Females right down there on the bottom. There the female has she's laying egg ring right there. See how she's overpositing? This is a wild female. I would say most likely she's gravid. Okay, I'm here in my den and this female Hemiluchamaya is still ovipositing. There you can see two more egg rings behind her. And all these came from this one female. She actually is ovipositing right now. She just laid another egg. So there are a few hundred eggs here. Or ova, I should say. What she was doing earlier was attempting to oviposit and I thought she was actually calling. Um, there she's going to the other side. They go back and forth from one side to the other and that's how they lay their egg ring. Chances are real good that this female has already been bred. Uh, usually they'll they'll breed right after they emerge from the pupa. What up? meant before by the narrow lobes was actually the distance between the tip of the leaf and the inside margin of the leaf. That's very narrow or shallow I should say, very shallow. This is a classic example of a blackjack oak. It's a healthy tree. Looks like it's going to do well here. Here I have an example of a post oak. You can see that the lobes are very deep instead of shallow. The distance between the tip and the inside margin is very deep. Or a white oak here, same thing. The tip of the leaf is way out here and then the inside margin is way down here. So it's a very deep lobe. Well, here's a male just fluttering just inches above the ground, flying very slowly. There he goes. He's been here for a while. He's circling back. There's three, four males flying at the same time right here. There's something close by here. I just caught that one. <clears throat> that one's in the net, but there was, there's another. Flying very close here. Let's see what they do here. 
I just looked up and all of a sudden, there's I don't know if it's because the temperature's dropping some or what's going on here. Let's try to follow. Can't make any sense out of what he's doing there. It's just inches above the ground, fluttering there. Normally when you see them, they're very directional in their flight. There's something right around here that they're attracted to. There's another one up right there. See? They're, flying, they're slowing down as they come in here. seem to be circling right around this area. That one that I just caught there, as you can see, it's fairly fresh. I don't see much flight wear or now he's trying to take off. <clears throat> Get a little pinch there. It looks pretty good. Some of these, like I said, are, are flight worn and some aren't. Some are in pretty good shape still. And it's the middle of November. <laughs> Next few days it's going to be rather warm. Tomorrow they're calling for thunder showers and uh, some storms coming through. And then Monday, this is Saturday, Monday it's uh, supposed to be 58 degrees, 59 possibly, and sunny. And if the sun comes out, I, I wouldn't doubt that it gets warmer than that. So they'll probably be on the wing for a few more days. And then all of a sudden, it'll all just shut off. And you won't see them again until next year. Well, I brought this moth home and uh, put her in a paper sack with some twigs and put her under this light. I'm curious to see what we got here. Put the female, that's that female I captured today. Yeah, let's see. She's down there. Oh, there's, there's an egg ring. Right, right there. She deposited an egg ring. Let's see, is that the only one? Yep. I was doubtful that she would had any eggs left in her, but uh, apparently. She had some left, so I'm, you know, I'm going to leave her in here a little bit longer. Uh, she may actually deposit another egg ring. Hard to say, but uh, we'll check on her again later. Okay, these are the males that I caught today, uh, November the 16th, 2013. And of the ones that I kept, I probably released just as many because they weren't of collectible status. They were either torn or severely flight-worn. And really, I didn't need all that many. <clears throat> Here I've got a good selection of uh, the variation in these males of uh, Hemaluca Maya. So there you have the uh, beauty in collecting and having a series of these. Because you can see that the individual variation from one to the other can be quite dramatic. Well, that just about does it for my Hemaluca collecting season. I just wanted to record the last trip out here. And i got to say, it's been a very good season. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of males flying back and forth in groups of three, four, five, six at a time. There's one right there just flying across the road. This is the spot where I always see them fly. And I gotta say, it's, it's been a, just a heck of a season. Captured a few dozen males. I saw hundreds more. And was successful in getting a few females and getting egg rings. So I'd say it's been quite a success. Thanks for watching.